When it comes to progressing character, there are in general three set of upgrade systems to look at. Leveling them up and getting their insights, increase their resonate, or leveling up and amplifying their psi cubes. But with the limited amount of materials we get in this game, what is the most efficient way to use them in upgrading? Well, in this video, I will be doing a deep dive into each upgrading system and give you some general guidelines for account progression so you don't make the same mistake I've made on my same account. First thing first, I think it's a good idea to understand how attack and defense actually affect your damage in this game. This game uses a very unique damage formula. Instead of enemy defense converting to some form of damage reduction, it's actually directly subtracted from your attack before any other multiplier. This greatly increases the value of attack as a stats, especially against enemy with higher defenses. To put this into perspective, let's say the enemy has 500 defense and you have 1000 attack. Adding 100 more attack onto your stat is not a 10% damage increase, but a 20% damage increase. Of course, through things like penetration and defense reduction this can vary, but for the most part, attack is more impactful than it looks. Also, I've done some testing for the current Limbo in CN. At stage 6, the enemy with A for defense has around 630 defense, and A plus defense is around 660. And with this trend, I'm gonna assume S is about 700, but I don't have an enemy to test it on right now. Either way, using my terribly built Centura in CN as an example, 100 attack can easily be more than 10% improvement to her damage, not counting penetration and defense reduction. This is the same with defense. Getting defense will greatly reduce the damage enemy does to you, and you will feel the difference when you raise your character pass inside 3. At the moment in CN, enemy with A for attack have around 1350 attack, and for A+, plus, that's around 1400, which means if your defense goes from let's say 600 to 700, that's roughly a 10 to 15% damage reduction. All these numbers will fluctuate based on the suggested level, which is inside 3 level 20 for level 6, so take this with a grain of salt when applying to different contents. And with that out of the way, let's actually look at the upgrading systems. With the substantial cost of going beyond Insight 3, it may seem like it's not worth going for the upgrade. However, there are some benefits to consider. Insight 3 enhances a character's critical attack, which increases both critical chance and critical damage for the character. Additionally, the passive ability unlocked at Insight 3 are important to consider. Some of these passives are essential, fundamentally altering the character's capabilities, while others may not make much of a difference at all. Certainly, in the endgame phase, aiming for Insight 3 for a DPS character is necessary, regardless of the importance of their Insight 3 passive, primarily to eke out that actual bit of damage. But before reaching that stage on your account, it's much better to first prioritize those Insight 3 upgrades that have a greater impact and contribute significantly to your team's overall functionality. And to help you make the decision of who to upgrade first, I've compiled a list with the most critical character to upgrade to Inside 3. Millennia, which just came out with 1.1 and also has her inside material inside of the event shop, has a relatively important Inside 3. It doubles the buff stack you gain from her ultimate and make her ultimate fully stack in just 3 uses instead of 6. Considering her ultimate is the majority of her damage, it's a very important insight to have. Lilia also has a very important Inside 3, because only with Inside 3, Resonance 10 and fully ascended Thunderous Applaud can she reach close to 100% critical chance. So the base inside 3 upgrade plays a vital role in keeping up in the late game. Without this upgrade, you typically find yourself using her heal skill every 2 turns. However, with the inside 3, Sota begins the ability to activate one stack of the existing cure instantly, thus letting her use heal every single turn, and effectively doubles her healing output when needed. A knight's inside 3 is a huge help for late game. Up to 40% penetration can be considered around 250 extra flat attack added to him using 630 as baseline for level 6 defense, and will increase his damage against low health enemies significantly. Regulus's inside 3 gives her a free moxie every time she she procs her passive. This lets her use her ultimate much more often, and a must-have if she's your sub DPS or main DPS. Charlie's inside 3 will only be active when she's about 50% health. When it's active, it's a hefty boost. But do consider whether you want to invest her as your main DPS in the long run based on how many portraits you have. Actually, a must-have if you're using her as your main DPS. And for the next part, they are a little bit more conditional. Eternity's Inside 3 is pretty impressive, but not a must-have unless you're using her solo, at which point that little bit of extra survivability and damage plus the status down immunity will make the difference. You also just want to increase her stats as much as possible when soloing anyway. Voyager's Inside 3 is quite nice with its ability to seal the enemy. If you use this correctly, you can deny enemy's ultimate for 3 to 4 turns when combined with her ultimate in between. But it does take some planning and you will have to actually think when playing her. Uh, at least Inside 3 can be a good boost to her damage, but only if you're invested in her damage. And to benefit from it, you will have to time your damage with Exorcism time buff, which you should be doing regardless of Inside 3. Druvi's 3's Inside 3 is very powerful buff that increases the survivability of her and her allies. However, this can only only affect plant units, so if you're running a plant team like Anali, Druvius, and Sasuki, then you should absolutely get it, otherwise it's not quite as important to have. 
For the remaining characters, upgrading to Inside 3 is less critical. This is either because their character don't play as a pivotal role in the meta as the rest, or their Inside 3 upgrade don't really offer substantial improvements. Nevertheless, it is important to remember that upgrading your main DPS to Inside 3 should be the priority as soon as you have finished getting the must-have Inside 3s in your team. And if you still have materials laying around after getting their Inside 3 and levels, continue pursuing Inside 3 upgrade for the rest of your team. This additional upgrades, well, perhaps not as critical as those of your main DPS or the must-have character still contribute to extra tankiness for easier late game. After reaching Insight 3, the next question is whether to continue level characters to max. Especially for free-to-play players, the answer is no. The difference in stats increase and the cost associated with leveling across various insight is a key factor to consider. Using Melania as an example to help illustrate this point, at Insight 0, the average attack increase per level is around 4.45. This increased to 5.56 for Insight 1 and 2, but then dropped significantly to 2.22 at Insight 3. This diminishing return is also seen in other stats like HP and Defense. All characters follow this growth curve. Albeit the different base value, each level grants a percentage of a character's maximum stats, with with a additional boost from Insight. Since the cost of leveling up is effectively reset with each new Insight level, Insight 3 offers better stamina to stats efficiency up until around level 30. Therefore, the general recommendation is to target level 30 after achieving Insight 3, as further leveling beyond this point offers diminishing return relatively to the cost of leveling up. Resonate can significantly boost your stats, and unlike Insight and Levels, which are expensive in terms of stamina needed, Resonate is not that expensive if you don't look past level 10. For Resonate 10, you don't even need Tier 4 materials to upgrade, but the materials specific to Resonate are limited and can only be obtained through time-gated methods, such as Job from Artificial Somnambulism, also known as Limbo, or Event Reward. For Resonate 10 and higher, the required special materials are even more restricted. Free-to-play players can typically get about 3 of those per month with the option to acquire more by spending golden records. While a lot of you probably believe each character has their own unique resonance board, this is actually not true. Instead, Resonate is currently split into 4 different formations based on their main piece. The cross set focuses on critical chance and damage, with 4 J pieces offering up to 7% crit chance and 4% crit damage each. The T set is geared toward the higher damage bonus build. It includes 4 S pieces, each providing a 4% damage bonus, but it has overall lower critical chance than the cross set. The Z set is a very balanced set with no focus on particular piece, and the U set is more defensive oriented with 3 Z pieces focused on damage reduction and anti-crit capabilities. The largest piece within a board has tons of stats, also unlike other pieces, they seemingly have static number for the base 4 stats. The percentage you see here on screen are actually calculated using characters base stats at Insight 3 level 60. With all that being said, what is the best way to upgrade Resonate? For Blue Resonate 10, you get a board size increase at level 3, level 5, level 7, level 9, and level 10. The best stopping point is at level 5, 9, and 10. They will have a board size increase which will give you a good boost in terms of stats, while level 6 and level 10 are also level that requires the next tier of Resonate materials. In general, you want to start by bringing everyone up to Resonate 5, after that, push your DPS character to Resonate 9 or Resonate 10 if you have access to Casket. Then, finally bring your support to Resonate level 9. The aim is to get every unit you actively use to Resonate time eventually, especially for the defensive stats, but remember, your DPS should always come first. For Resonate level beyond 10, this is an area free to play should not touch until much later. It's more beneficial to print all the frequently used characters up to Resonate level 10 rather than focusing on getting a single character to Resonate level 15. If you play it smart, you should be able to start leveling your DPS's Resonate beyond 10 after about 4 patches. For those considering advancing beyond level 10 right now, here is what you should know. All smaller pieces receive one upgrade between level 11 to 13, and the main pieces get a status boost at level 11, 13, 14, and 15. At level 13, the T pieces gain a new critical damage stat, while cross set gets a damage reduction stat. It's best to stop at Resonant 13 on T shape, as you will unlock 4% extra crit damage. The cross is a little special with the biggest stat boost at Resonant 15, so consider stopping it at either level 11 or going all the way to 15. The Z ship doesn't have a significant stat boost. Back, so you can stop at any wrestling level you prefer, and the U shape is typically used for more defensive characters, so unless you particularly like a character with the shape, it's recommended to not go beyond level 10 on the sport. When deciding between focus on Resonate or reaching Insight 3 for your character first, it's generally better to prioritize getting to Resonate level 10 first, as long as you have the time getting materials available. The stats boost from Resonate 10 is substantial and offers a significant improvement for a much lower stamina cost than the Insight 3. 
Now, Psycube is actually quite simple. As you play the game for longer, you generally accumulate enough materials to fully level your Psycubes. However, the decision to amplify Psycube requires much more thoughtful consideration, especially since you can acquire only about 2 to 3 Glani per month, depends on whether you are spending. For both free to play and paid players, my recommendation is focus on amplifying Psycubes primarily for your DPS characters, especially those versatile enough to be used by multiple characters. Here's a breakdown of those Psycubes. The two Psycubes that are related to Ultimate, which are Brave New World and Luxurious Leisure, have pretty good value in terms of return from amplification, but Luxurious Leisure is locked to only single target Ultimate. Hopscotch stand out as a generally good Psycube for most DPS characters, but there are exceptions. For example, Melenia's damage is heavily relying on her Ultimate and has relatively weak basic skills. Hopscotch also requires mobs in the stage to activate its passive bonus, making it not as useful in certain stages. Blasphemous of Night is a really good Psycube if you can trigger is passive at least half of the time, which means this is tied to team using character like Sotheby and cannot be used by some other teams. Only consider this piece if you have ways to proc it. Thunderous Applause can only be used effectively by Lydia and no one else, so if Lydia is your waifu then maybe, otherwise you should not amplify the Psycube. Lastly, there is his Bound in Duty. Although it's a fantastic early game Psycube due to its high attack value and strong damage bonus without requirement, its passive effect doesn't contribute to additional damage. Thus, you should avoid amplifying this piece. That about wrap up our deep dive on this game's progression systems. To quickly sum it up for those who want straight up advice without the detailed reasoning, your first goal for all characters should be to reach Insight 2 level 50. Once you're there, your next move is to choose between focusing on Resonate level or advancing Insight 3. When come to Resonate, start by bringing everyone up to Resonate 5. After that, push your DPS character to Resonate 9 or Resonate 10 if you have access to the casket. Then finally, bring your supports to Resonate level 9. The aim is to get every unit you actively use to Resonate level 10 eventually, especially for the defensive stats. But remember, your DPS should always come first. As for Insight 3, prioritize those characters with the most impactful Insight abilities, followed by your DPS and then your supports. And when you are leveling up in Insight, target level 30 post Insight 3 gives you the most return on your stamina investment. When you choose between Insight 3 and Resonate level, it's always better to level up your Resonate first as long as you have the time gated materials for Resonate, as it costs much less stamina to do. Resident Beyond Level 10 is something you should only consider after you have a fully functional team with Resonate 10s, or if you're spending money and getting extra casket in access both for free to play. And finally, when come to amplification, look for side cubes you can use on multiple DPS if possible. That's everything for this video. Hopefully you now have a clear understanding of how the stats and each growth system in this game work, so you can make more informed decisions about where to allocate your limited resources. This has been Steampunk X, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.